Hi everyone, my name is Lara from LK Yoga and today I'm going to be talking you through Warrior 2. Warrior 2 is a great pose for building some standing strength in the legs as well as working on opening up through the hips and the external hip rotation of the front leg. Um, it's really great for helping you warm up for deeper hip, um, external hip rotating poses such as uh, pigeon pose um, and you'll find it in most vinyasa um, class sequences. So these cues today are not exclusive. You'll find plenty of other different cues that I won't necessarily mention. Doesn't mean these are right or wrong. It's just like lots of different teachers and interpretation of the pose and the things that we find important. So hopefully you'll find these cues today helpful, but there's plenty of other things. Um, if you go and have a look online at other content or talk to your yoga teacher, I'm sure they'll come up with some other advice for you too. So whether you're new to yoga or you practice regularly, it's always great to ha have advice from lots of different teachers um, and lots of different sources to help you find the, the cues that work for you and help you to find what this pose means for you. So without further delay, we're going to come from Downward Facing Dog to Warrior 2. So for Downward Facing Dog, I'm going to take my hands nice and wide, wide um, in line with the top placement lines, and I'm going to lift the hips up towards the sky and press the heels down. So hips are nice and high, slight bend in the arms, back nice and long, and neck in line with the spine. On the inhale, I'm going to lift the right leg up towards the ceiling and step the right foot through to the top of the mat, taking it towards the central placement line. The left foot's going to turn to 90 degrees. So I'm going to make sure that this left foot is um, sort of centralized on the placement line. So we want the center of the arch on the left foot to be in line with the heel of the front foot. So you can use the center line here to help you get that alignment. And from here, I'm going to take the arms nice and wide, spiral them out so they run down the center line, and I'm going to sink into my legs, easing out over the front hand. So my favorite cues for this pose, if I start to break it down. So one of the first things that's really important is to do with the foot position. So the front leg is, is uh, bent towards 90 degrees, and the back leg's nice and straight. So in terms of my feet, what does this mean? I'm pressing into the outside edge of the back foot with the left leg in this, in this um, side of the stance. And my right foot's gonna be nice and flatly placed, got a slight lift of the inner arch on both feet. And my toes are nice and relaxed. So one thing you will always hear me talk about in my classes is relaxing the toes. Because as soon as you start to tense up with the feet, you get tense calf muscles, lower leg muscles, and that just translates all the way up. It's the same as having tight shoulders. We wanna make sure we're nice and relaxed and strong and grounded in our poses to help us um, sort of come into our full expression of them. So then the next thing we wanna to start to look at is the knee position. So one thing you'll also hear some teachers cue is um, to make sure you can see just the tips of your toes. So you can see the toes over the knee. So what they're meaning here is that as we bend this knee towards 90 degrees, we don't want this to happen. So now you can see that my knee is coming out probably just slightly over my toes. If you have a go at this yourself, what you'll find is that in that position, your quad muscles, so the muscles on the top of your leg, are working in overdrive to try and stabilize your knee and keep you there. And it's a bit like the, um, the squeezing of the toes. If you're doing that, then you're not going to start to sink into the pose. You're gonna be fighting the pose um, and it's not particularly helpful um, at all. So what we wanna try and do is take the foot reasonably far forward. For me, I am five foot four. And for me, I always practice warrior two with my the edge of my back foot on the back placement line and my heel of the front foot on the front placement line. Obviously, if you're taller than me, then you're gonna have a slightly wider stance. So you need to sort of find the different, sort of use the placement lines to help you find your position. So you might find that actually that you have the big toe on this placement line and that your heel comes all the way to the top placement line. So just, just use them as guidance every time you come into the pose, just to check in if you're in the sort of the right position. And then to do with the angle of the knee, so you'll hear us, um, us, us teachers um, say that you want to work the knee towards 90 degrees. So that's coming down all the way to here. And for most people that is going to be way too intense, way too deep to start with, particularly if you're not warmed up and you've not practiced yoga for very long. That's quite a deep pose to be in in terms of leg strength so we're going to work our way towards that that is our goal we won't most people will probably never do a warrior two for a whole class where they're bending the knee leg is that much i don't think i would in every single class particularly when i'm not warm so what we want to do is just make sure that if anything the knee is behind the ankle in this pose maybe working out towards being stacked so the knee is stacked on top of the ankle 
um, but you're never coming that bit further. Uh, you're just working for the sake of working and it's not going to help us um, get any deeper into the pose. So the next thing we're going to start to look at is hip and shoulder position. So our torso is twisted towards the side of the mat um, and we want to make sure that our shoulders are roughly in line with our hips. Um, and so this is just one thing we don't want to end up doing. So if this is our warrior two position, we don't want to end up over here. So you see, as people get tired, sometimes they start to lean forward. I was over exaggerating it there. But what is really important is just to try and keep the chest nice and broad, draw the shoulders back and then hips under shoulders. So if anything, you might feel like someone, like imagine the sensation of someone pulling you back slightly. That's the sort of position that we want to be going for. So it's really easy just to quickly sort of check down and see, am I roughly a box, not a parallelogram? Um, we're not slanting to the sides, we're not drunk, hopefully, in our yoga class. Um, and then also making sure the shoulders are nice and relaxed. So we're going to draw the shoulders up, back and down and relax them and keep the chest proud. That's a cue that I use in most of my yoga classes. And it just is talking about that sort of drawing the shoulders back ever so slightly, keeping the chest lifted, core ever so slightly engaged. So we've got a nice, strong sort of center point um, to take the arms out from. And then the final thing is our gaze. So we gaze over the front fingers. Sometimes you'll hear your yoga teachers refer to this as drishti, which is just a Sanskrit for sort of focus point. So we're gonna look out over the front hand. So hopefully our warrior two pose should look something like this. Um, so lots of cues there. Um, and the only other thing that is sort of worth mentioning um, is the position of the knee. So sometimes you'll also say, watch that the knee doesn't track out towards the edge. Um, so sort of roll, start to roll inwards. Um, and the only thing that I would say with this is um, if you naturally are slightly bow-legged, so if you stand in a relaxed position, your legs sort of do that rather than track straight, which is very much um, something that can, can happen um, depending on the way the top of the femur, the top of the leg bone um, sits in the pelvis. And if that, if you find your knees do turn slightly in, then I would kind of, to a degree, ignore that pose. If you're not getting any pain in the knee, then just come into the pose. If all your other alignment tips feel good, um, and other than your sort of average day-to-day -day tightness, nothing hurts, then just focus in on that. So we do want to try and keep the knee nice and straight and in line, but you have to bear in mind your own anatomy when considering that. It's quite a generalized term. Everyone is different. Everyone in pose looks different. So just work with what feels good for you. So I hope this video has been really helpful for you. Um, feel free to pop me a message. Just reach out to our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, and just say, hey, Lara, and it'll get directed to me. Um, if not, you can always approach any yoga teacher. I'm pretty sure I've yet to meet one that's not friendly. Um, and ask their advice. They'll be absolutely flattered and love to help you. So have a great day and I hopefully see you soon. Namaste.